is given I will enter this God with praise. I will say this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. glad. I am so glad. I will rejoice for He made me glad. He has made me glad. I am so glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made us glad. He has made us glad. We will rejoice for he has made us glad. He has made us glad. We are so glad. We will rejoice for He has made us glad. We are your oh Father. We are your oh Son. Holy Ghost, we are yet commenting on truth. We are yet, we are yet, Father. We are yet, O Son. Holy Ghost, we are yet commenting on truth. We are yet. We are Father, we are Son, Holy Ghost, we are come and seek on true, we are yet, we are Father, we are Son. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, Alleluia. You are the mighty God. The great I am. Alleluia. Alleluia. You are the mighty God. The great I am. Alleluia. Alleluia. You are the mighty God. The great I am. Alleluia. Alleluia. You are the mighty God. The great I am. Alleluia. Alleluia. From east to west. No road I got. From north to south, I say there is no road I got. From east to from east to west, no road I got. From north to south, I say there is no road I got. Thank you. 
not to sell. I say there is no other world. No need to go No other God. another morning like this for us to be on this mountain. It is not by power, not by mind, but by the grace of God that we are alive today. Let us make that prayer in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for the grace that you've given to us for the gift of life. Father, Lord God, we are not alive because we are more righteous. We are not alive, Lord God, because we are much more meritorious than those that are gone. But because of your protection we are alive today. There is nothing that we have not all different from those that are dead. My God, Heavenly Father, that we are counted among the living not a dead. Lise that are not those to Mariba Saint Elaine. Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you, Lord God, for you choosing to give us life this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you, Jesus. That while we are asleep, Lord God, we are fighting all our own sin battles. We are asleep, asleep, Lord God, like something last week because your guiding angel was at work in our lives. 
Let us pray and thank God for, for fighting all our unseen battles. There are battles we fight every day in our lives that we don't know about. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against past, and against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Let us begin to thank God for fighting all our battles, all our unseen battles. Begin to thank him right now. Begin to thank him for fighting for you. You know, the Bible says that the battle is mine and the victory is yours. Begin to thank him now. Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you for fighting our unseen battles. The word says the battle is yours and the victory is ours. God, while we are still Yesterday, Lord God, fighting, fighting our battles, Lord God, you put an edge round about us. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we don't know what was happening, Lord God. Most people, Lord God, in their dream state, they die in their dream state. Father, Lord God, many are those that cannot sleep in the night because they wrestle in their dreams. They wrestle in their dreams. They see people pushing them in their dreams. They see a lot of things happening in their dreams. Oh, you gave us peace of mind. You gave us victory. Why we, why we don't even know that you are fighting for us. I think for us. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for the victory of the night. God, I never thought for giving us sound sleep. Thank you for the victories you've given unto us. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free. Let it children. Now, let us pray and thank God for the sanity of our body and mind. You know, we are not better than those mad men and women out there. Each time I am in a taxi, each time I am in the church, each time I am going on the street and I see a madman, I look at that madman from head to toe. We are not different. He has his two hands, he's handsome, he's everything, but the mind, he has a mental problem. And that is why it's on the street. I see the lady as well. She's mad. I compare with my sister. There is no difference. There is a grace. Let us thank God for the sanity of our body and mind. Make it your prayer right now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord God, I say thank you for the sanity of my body. Thank you, Lord God, for the sanity of my mind. Father, Lord God, that my mind is not attacked. Father, Lord God, that my body, the integrity of my being is intact. Heavenly Father, I say thank you, Lord God. The cripple out there, I am not different. The madman out there, I am not different. There is nothing I have that, that I am I am standing on my two feet, that I have my faculties, I have my I have my integrity intact, the integrity of my body intact. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I am forever grateful. The word says, he that is grateful in little things, be grateful in Lord my Lord God, if I don't have any reason to be grateful, even the fact that I have the sanity of my body and mind. Every other thing, Najara, every other Najara, I am physically sound, I am mentally fit. Father, Lord God, I say thank you. I say thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the sanity of my body. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the sanity of my mind. Likewise, I pray, I pray Lord God, keep doing it for me. Do it again and again. Sickness and disease. Disease is not a part of me. Holy Father, Lord God, I thank you for divine sanity. For divine sanity, not only for today, even for tomorrow. Lord, if I know you are the prayer, in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Let us pray for our siblings. Some of us are relaxed, the way we are relaxed, because we've not had bad news from anybody. 
When somebody is sick and you are related to that person, you'll be disturbed. When somebody dies and you're related to that person, you are disturbed. Let us pray. Let us pray for our siblings. Let us pray you are a mother, you are a father, you may not be with your children right now. Let us pray for divine coverage. Let us pray, Lord God. Let us intercede in their behalf right now. Pray, pray, pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the Father, Lord God. Jesus pray, Lord God. I stand in the gap for my siblings. I stand in the gap for my parents. And for all the people that are related to me right now. For their security. I pray for their protection. I pray for your divine courage. Lord God. I Lord God. That you protect them, that you guide them, that no evil shall fall them. No arrow by night or evil by day shall befall them. They will and they will come back safely. Protect them and cover them with the mighty blood. Jesus, God, I do divine coverage. To everyone that is treated to me, I will for divine coverage in Jesus' name. Because God, Bad news will not know my address. Bad news will not find me. Bad news will not be my friend. Bad news will not be my neighbor. I pray, Lord God. I pray, Lord God. No bad news will come to me. My siblings, to my parents, to my grandparents, to everyone around me. I pray, Lord God. Oh, I pray, Lord God. Bad news. Bad news. my portion this morning. It will not be my portion tomorrow. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Let us pray for those that are sick. Let us pray because the Bible says in James chapter 5 from 16, you know, it says... Uh, uh, it says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous uh, availeth much. The Bible says that we are the one, we are the sons of men, we are the sons of God, that the world is expecting the endless, the endless expectation of this world is you and I. So let us pray for those that are sick. Let us pray for healing. That let the healing flow from us right now and connect to those that are sick around us and those that are in the hospital. Can we pray for them in Jesus' name? Heavenly Father, Lord God, all those who are sick, wherever they are, those people that are sick, those people that are lying in the hospital, but that they cannot help, send your Holy Spirit them in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, my Father, we ask you to in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, my Father, we ask you to heal in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, my Father, we ask you to heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, my Father, we ask you to heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, my Father, we ask you to heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, my Father, we ask you to heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, my Father, we ask you to heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, my Father, we ask you to heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, my Father, we ask you Lord God, we are praying. Amen. As I was praying, the spirit of suicide. I don't know. The spirit just telling me we should pray against any spirit of suicide. There are some people who are intending to take their life. Because of the frustration, because of the difficulties, because of the anxiety they are having. Children of God, let us just pray against every spirit of suicide. Just make it your prayer in Jesus' name.
let us pray for the Holy Spirit because this mountain that we come every morning and we take it for granted. The name of this mountain is called Holy Ghost Prayer Mountain. Let us call on the Holy Ghost. Let it, let it come and give us revelation, knowledge. Let the Holy Ghost come and be our comforter. Let the Holy Ghost come and teach us all things. He's your friend. Let us invite him in this, in this, in this uh, uh, mountain right now in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we call upon you. Heavenly Be the Alpha and the Omega. And the end. And guide us through this. Guide us through this session. The driver of this meeting this morning. Teacher this morning. Give us revelation knowledge. Take your place on this mountain. Come and take your place in our lives. Come and take your place in our business. 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 Come and take your let us to thank God for a new day. Let us say thank God. Let us begin to say, God, thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We're closing with this prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for answering all our prayers. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. We believe that you've done it for us again and again. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. 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 Can we say good morning to ourselves? Good morning, good morning, good morning, America. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I don't know which other nationality we have there again. Good morning, Kenya. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Liberia. So this morning. I have been assigned to shed light by the Holy Spirit on the topic um, prayer. Mama assigned me yesterday that we should try to examine prayer. And if this topic is given, it's because uh, it is very important in our lives. Because if we are Christians, you know, 
prayer is very important. You know, for us, prayer is like breathing. You know, show me a powerless Christian, I will show you a Christian who cannot pray. And show me a powerful Christian, I will show you a Christian who can pray. Show me a family, show me a home. Show me a home that is a, a successful home, a, a, a model home is a home that is a prayerful home. And I'm, we are saying this because we as Africans, basically, you know, we, we, we cherish our morning devotions and that's what we are doing here. It's the same tradition. We are brought up in that system. We we'll have our morning devotions and we have our evening devotions. So it is as important as breathing. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let us try to examine prayer. So I wrote this. I said... Let us let me pray before we start. Actually, Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you for this opportunity to share your word with your children. Thank you, Lord God, for the body of Christ. Father, Lord God, teach your children through me and teach me as well. Enlighten our minds of understanding that will shape in our lives and our, and our world for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 So, the first thing I want us to know. <coughs> Simplicity is that prayer is our direct line to God. Prayer is simply our channel to God. Anytime we want to talk to God, the only means we can reach God is through the prayers. So prayer is our channel to the Almighty. So whenever we want to reach the Almighty, I wrote here, I say, switch your button. Switch your button to the prayer mode. You know, prayer mode simply tells you that you are leaving the, you are leaving the, 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 the your, your physical environment and you are going to the spiritual. So that is the essence of our prayer. You know, I wrote here, I said, prayer is an act of communication by humans with God. You know, it's our act of communication by human to God, with God. And we should know this, that there are two basic where we can pray. You know, we have corporate prayer and we have personal prayer. Like what we are doing here now is corporate prayer, where we come to encourage ourselves, where we are, we are unified in the spirit, where there is agreement. Because, for instance, when I give a prayer point, we all pray along. That is corporate prayer. So corporate prayer is about people coming together in agreement to pray or to communicate, channel all their worries to God. So that is prayer. So we know today that uh, there is corporate prayer and private prayer. What's your private prayer? It's your personal prayer. And I think that is what uh, this Holy Ghost Mountain used to do. I think there are days like Tuesdays, um, Tuesdays where we come and everybody just pray to God as you want to. Though we are like in the body of Christ, but everybody has come to, what, to, to, to talk to God. I think that is what it is, it is done here. I try to imagine that, you know. So why there is a time where we pray along like we, we've done today. So that is personal prayer. And one thing I want to say about prayer is that prayer is, it should be a time of intimate relationship with God. You know, some of us take prayer very casual. Your prayer should not be casual. Your prayer should be a time to have a, an intimate relationship with, well, with God. Because there are many of us who don't take prayer very seriously. We are praying, we are talking. We are praying, we are, we are eating. We are praying, we are looking left and we are looking right. God will not take you seriously. Nobody will take you seriously, even human beings. How much more? God. Prayer is a time of keep all distraction aside. Let us get this basic foundation clear. Because most of us will complain that uh, our prayers are not being answered. Which God will answer a man who is not serious? You go to school to write an exam and you don't, you don't prepare very well. How do you think you, could, you will pass? You cannot pass the exam. So too, in our prayer life, you cannot come to God and you want to pray to God and you are distracted. God will just look at you as this one is not serious yet. Let me keep her waiting first till when she's ready. Let me keep him waiting first till when he's it's, when it's ready. But God sees your seriousness. God is bound to answer your prayer. Is that what happened? If we should go to, may somebody read 
let me let me just go quickly. Do I never want you to go there? But let us go. Somebody should open first Samuel and see something very well. Go to first Samuel and see how Anna prayed. Anna prayed with seriousness, and God answered her prayer. I, I don't know, but God just has to share this one with people. That was not the order I was supposed to go. Anna, somebody should go there and read. Go to Anna. Go to uh, first Samuel. Go to first Samuel. Chapter 9, from 9, 1 Samuel, chapter 1, from 9 to 11. Can somebody read for us? In the... First Samuel, 1, 9 to 11. First Samuel. Uh, read in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse uh, number one. When chapter had, one. Yes. Verse nine. Yes, nine to eleven. Okay. Once, when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now, Eli the priest was sitting on a chair by the uh, doorpost of the Lord's temple. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. Mommy, mommy, hold on, mommy, hold on there. You just read to me, I heard in bitterness of soul, in bitterness of soul, Anna prayed, meaning that she was, she came ready. Mommy, read on. Amen. 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 Mommy, read on, read on, read on to 11. Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. And she made a vow saying, Oh Lord Almighty, if you would only look upon your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. Uh, Our mother have just read, Mama read to us that Anna came with a what a solemn good news says, Anna made a solemn promise. Even when I went on, she said that she was deeply distressed and cried bitterly as she prayed. Most of us don't cry bitterly. We'll come to God casually. That is why some of our prayers are not being answered. Some of us, we just put the burden on the man of God, put the burden on the woman of God, put the burden on the priest, put the burden on the pastor, and we don't play our own role. Look at, at this time, the, the, at this time, Eli was not involved. Eli was not involved. It was Anna. Anna and her God. She was already in Shiloh. She was in the temple. And she was praying earnestly. She was praying bitterly. She was praying in faith, believing that God was going to answer her prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. And God did. So I want to tell us that in the name of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, let us take prayer as serious as seriously as we want to write an exam. Anytime we come to the presence of God, let us be in an attitude of intimate relationship with God. It's a time of relationship. I, I want to imagine that when a man and a woman, uh, a husband, I mean, I'm talking in the marriage, uh, in the context of being married, then when they want to have intimate time, they will open the doors for the children to be coming in and out. It doesn't work that way. They will lock up everywhere and prepare the environment for their intimate relationship. So that is how prayer is. When you are coming, make sure that I am giving myself to God in prayer. That is what it is. Now, I went further to say this. Prayer is a two-way traffic. Most of us, we know how to pray. We can pray, we can pray, but we don't know how to listen. That is the reason why we don't get our, our answers to our prayer. We will pray and pray and pray and speak in tongues and jump up and roll ourselves on the floor. While we are praying our prayers, some of us don't have what? Listening ears. 
how can you be talking to somebody, you called me on the phone, and you're talking and talking and talking and talking, meaning we are not communicating. We are not communicating. So when we are praying, we should know, we should be in that consciousness or in that mindset that prayer is a, what, a communication process between man and God and what from God to, to man. When we pray without listening, we shall pray amiss. Maybe you are praying and telling God that I want a Jeep. When you don't even know how to ride a bicycle. And God is telling you that in that prayer that my son, go and learn how to ride a bicycle first, then you'll get the Jeep. And you are praying and praying for that Jeep. Since you know yet God telling you to go and learn how to ride a bicycle, you will never get a Jeep because you fail to listen to God. Let me give you a practical example why we don't receive our answers to our prayers. Look at when you look at the life of Abraham, God instructed Abraham that Abraham should sacrifice his son. Isaac, he obeyed. When he, got to the, when he got to the mountain where he was going to sacrifice Abra, uh, Isaac, God spoke to him again. At the time he has taken the dagger, a dagger's drawn, he was about bringing the dagger down, and God spoke to him again. Because Abraham had a listening ear, he did not sing. So some of us, we know how to pray, but we don't know how to, how to listen. Because our desires, our wants, our worries is overtaking, overtaking our, our consciousness. So we don't know when to, we don't know how to listen to God. So that was something I realized that let us establish those foundations. First foundation, I, allow, I, I bring the point that we are all, we, we, we have a corporate prayer, personal prayer. Second thing that you should understand that prayer is an intimate relationship with God. Third thing you need to understand is that prayer is a two-way traffic. It's a relationship of two-way traffic. It's not a one thing. And we see that there are promises in the Bible that guarantee us reasons why we should pray. How, why will I pray if I don't have assurance? Why will I pray if I don't have if I don't have expectations of my prayer being answered, can somebody read for us Psalms, Psalms 91, the popular Psalms, Psalms 91 verse 15? It's a promise. Psalms 91 verse 15. And somebody else should read Isaiah 65, 24. Psalms 91, 15. Isaiah 56, 24. I read in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Psalms 91, 15. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. to God. So that is an assurance that you will call upon the Lord and he will answer you. Then if you don't get answers, why? Why? This is a promise. It's a promise not only to the Christians of old, or the Jews, but it's a, it's a promise to each and every one of us as children of, of God. Let's go to Isaiah 65, Isaiah 65, 24. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. Amen. Amen. This one is even a rapid answer to your prayer. You know, I, I want to take time to come. You know, when we invited that, uh, that comedian, um, um, Livingston, MC Livingston, he said something that we all were laughing. When Mama stood up, he said, woman of God, Apostle man, God called you, but me, I called God. And he was saying jokingly that people like you, when you pray, God answers you quickly, but me, I need to call my father, my 
Father, when you are in line with God, Isaiah 65 is your experience. There are some people that when they pray for you, sharp, sharp, you receive reply. It is a promise. Now, how would that one be our experience? Mm-hmm. We need to align ourselves what? with the word of God. We need to align ourselves with the word of God. I will know, you may not read this one, but we know Matthew 7, 7, which says that with what? We should knock, seek, find. We know all those things. Matthew chapter 7. But I want us to read one. I want you to read one promise with God I've said. This is our number. This is our number to call God. People fondly say that this is our this our this God's number. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Jeremiah, I need somebody to read that, please. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Amen. Amen. That is God telling you that you should call on him. He said, call on me and I will answer you. I will tell you great and mighty things. I will show you great and mighty things that you know you know not. You can only call on God in prayer. I don't know your problem. I don't know your challenges. I am trying not to preach. I'm trying to teach. I don't know your challenges or problem. Try to understand these things. He says you should call upon him. So the way you call upon him, when you look at, when you look at that Jeremiah, it's just triple three. Don't forget it in your mind. Three, three, there's three. Call upon me. That is an assurance. God is assuring us. And before I go on, as Christians, it's our right. When we have that relationship with God, we call him and ask him anything. Anything in Jesus' what? In Jesus' name. You're not afraid to ask him anything. Just the way a child is not afraid to ask his father or mother that I want to eat. You know that is a child's right. You know that God, there is a relationship. A neighbor's child cannot come to the other compound and tell the parents of that compound that, that they are want to eat naturally. It's not just naturally done. But when you have a relationship with God, when you call him in prayer and ask him anything, please, I insist relationship. Please, I am insisting on what? Relationship. Because many people don't have relationship with God. They are just nominal Christians. They only come to God when they are sick. They only come to God when they have a crisis. Even on this prayer mountain, I, from the history, I that some people will go and come. So they only come when they need help from God. When you have a relationship with God, so my insistence is most of us use men and women of God as gambe man. Let me use what mama was saying the other time. You know, there was times she said that they will come and say, hey, pray for me, do this for me, do this for me. You are using them as if they are magicians. No. The difference is that when you have a relationship with God, when you pray, you will answer. When a man of God intercedes for you, he will answer. So when you're not receiving answers to your prayer, ask yourself again, am I, am I having a relationship with God? That's what he's saying. If you look at Romans, you may not read this. If you look at uh, Romans 10, 9 to 10, you know, he's talking about our relationship. When you have a relationship, when you've confessed, because say, when you confess with your mouth, because it can only happen to Christians that have a relationship. When you've confessed with your, you know, you believe with your heart, you confess with your mother, is Lord over your life. Through that name, Jesus Christ, you ask anything in my name. Because Jesus Christ told us that when you ask anything in my name, what will happen? My father will answer you. So the problem we are having is that we don't have a relationship with God. Most of us come with the ut- ut- utilitarian mentality. When we need God, we use him. After he's done with us, we go. That is what most of us, we do. And that is why our answer, our prayers are not being 
answered. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we should have a relationship. One thing I want to add here is that the book of Psalms, please, I want to encourage each and every one of us to take seriously the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms is a prayerful book. It is a write-up of prayer, prayer in thanksgiving form, prayer in trouble, prayer in this. You remember when I came and joined Point this line, before we quit, I even... Even our, our grace, our, our grace, the Lord Shepherd, our grace is the Psalms. So when, Psalms 91 is another powerful one from A to Z, you know? So we should take seriously the book of Psalms. Psalms is full with what? With, with prayers. Amen? Amen. Amen. So uh, I, I want to delve in now to, to, uh, uh, to, to types of prayers. Honestly, I was going to I was going to tell Mama to make it a series. So it's it's a, it's a very important topic she gave to me, and I want us to really do justice to it. You know, I go on. I said there are different types of prayers. Okay, there are different types of prayer because sometimes you may be praying one other prayer for another thing. <laughs> you know, somebody cannot be sick. Uh, the person has diabetes. He goes to the office and he goes to the hospital and you go and put a, 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 a glucose in his body, his or her body. You are killing, you kill that person. You know? So sometimes we don't, we don't know that there are different kinds of prayer that we should be very mindful of. And one thing you should know, one thing you should know that when we are praying, we must apply faith. We don't give up when we are praying. Let me just give you an idea. There is... There is something about the book of Daniel. When you read the book of Daniel, I may not be pinpointing it right now because of my time I'll be working with. When you look at the book of Daniel, when Daniel was praying, Daniel prayed for many days. He prayed for 21 days. 21 days. Meaning that there was a kind of a persistent prayer that Daniel prayed. You know, when Daniel prayed, on the first day, God answered his prayer. Please. And this is why some of we go and say, this man of God does not have power. This man of God is not doing, is not doing that. Please be mindful. Daniel prayed on the first day. God answered the prayer. But there was a prince of Persia in the air that blocked the messenger angel from bringing the words. He responds. So we should know that even when we pray, we should be persistent. Imagine that if Daniel would have given up on, let me say, the 20th day. And the prayer was to reach him on the 21st day. He realized that he will not have his words, his answer, prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because when the angel, when, when there was that blockage between the angel, messenger angel and Daniel, angel Michael came, the angel of war, came and fought off and defeated the prince of Persia. And the, and the, what, the, 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 the answer to the Daniel's prayer arrived that time. So the angel was explaining to Daniel that it was because of the prince of, of Persia. So we should be persistent in our prayers. Most of us are not persistent. Most of us are not patient. Most of us are not patient. You, God answers prayers. If you are a child of God and you are called according to his purpose, know that when you pray, know that when a man or a woman of God prays, he will always answer your prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, that is why I insist on this, this formula called, you say, pray until something happens. Pray until what? Something happens. Happen. Can all of us say that together? Pray until something happens. Pray, pray until something, until something, something happens. Happen. Can we take that again? Pray, pray until, until, until happen. something, something happens. Happen. We don't have a choice as Christians. We don't have a choice as sons and daughters of God. The devil knows that a prayerful Christian is a dangerous Christian. That is why it would discourage you from praying. It would discourage you from coming online. It would discourage you with many things. When you pray and you are persistent, let me tell you, God must answer your prayer. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. There's all, I want to break it down now. I want to break it down now that that prayer, we have communion prayer, you know, we will come together and pray in fellowship or we'll come together and take communion. You know, there are different forms to see it. When you come together in fellowship, that's communion prayer. We pray together and we take the, the blood and the, uh, the, the flesh and the blood of God, of Jesus Christ. That is the kind of prayer. Another prayer that we have, which I'll detail later, is prayer of supplication. We pray, you should know this so that when you are praying, you should know the kind of prayer you are praying. There's a prayer of supplication where you bring your needs to God, where you put your petitions to God. That's a kind of prayer you are praying. There's another prayer of intercession. We pray that this morning. Prayer of intercession. One will stand in the gap. One will pray on behalf. You know, I was there, my mom, my mom the other time, Mama Victorine, when it was, it was praying, she, she prayed for Cameroon. We used to do it as well. Pray for the sons and daughters over there. You know, that is a kind of, a, a kind of intercessory prayer. Pray for our, our men of God. Pray for our, our, our statesmen. You know, that is it. Then we have this one <laughs> to so many people, maybe, maybe, maybe the one they want. This one I'm going to say now. Eh? Spiritual welfare. Die, 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 die. Fire, 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 fire. You know, in Jesus' name, you know. This one <laughs> attracts a lot of people because it's a welfare prayer. You know, it's a warfare prayer. When we want to go to war, because we are fighting a war, whether we like it or not, from when we came to this earth and to depart, it's a constant battle. Battle against ourselves, battle against demons, battle against principalities, like we read in, in, uh, uh, in Revelation uh, uh, 12. You saw the old battle that was going on there. So there is a warfare prayer. So when you are coming to a man of God, Make be known, make your be, or give your mind an orientation that I am coming to do battle, battle in the spirit. You know, there is a song which I don't know if people know. I said, Who can battle with the Lord? My mother used to sing, I don't know if some of you still know it on, on the line. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Say nobody. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Say nobody. nobody. So that is the mm. thing. Which Go is stronger than the fear, mm -hmm. in the sight and the fear, as in the nobody. nobody. Amen. Amen. So that is, when you are saying that, you are putting yourself in a battle-ready mood. You are putting yourself in a battle-ready mood. So we have spiritual warfare. And that one will, will take us to uh, Ephesians 6.12. We can read all of Ephesians 6, 12 and see that, that we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood, against what? Principalities, powers, and against spiritual wickedness. Maybe somebody should read that for us and see the whole of that. Let us go. Let us visit that. Let us visit Ephesians 6, 12. Some of us have not read it. Let us visit it and see this battle. If you want to battle, that is the one you need. Ephesians 6, 12. Are we there? Yes. Amen. Amen. Efficient world. For we wrestle not against, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual in high places, is the word of the Lord. Um, Thanks be to God. Thank you to God. I I'll read 13. It says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor mm -hmm. of God, that ye may be able to withstand mm -hmm. in so we stand in the evil days, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loin guard 
about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. You can read on and see. So we are, we should be ready. We want to, we want to go to welfare prayer. We should be ready. Is battle ready? So and I told you for that there are there are there are two types dealing with yourself. Let me tell you the greatest battle you have is not the battle that the woman of God or the man of God has not pray with you, pray, pray, pray for you. Is the battle of of the mind. When the man of God lay hands and say, "Go, my daughter, you are healed. Go, my son, you are healed." And you are going and you are doubting. That is a battle. The devil will say, "Ah, you are not healed." Oh. You are not here. Let me tell you, that man has not done anything. What you get to just, you just uh, olive oil. You can even fry stew with the oil. You can even fry pancake with the oil. There's nothing inside. That is the battle of the mind. So some of us don't understand that. Let me tell you something. Why you should know that the mind is the greatest battlefield. When Jesus Christ came, he went to the wilderness to fast for 40 days, 40 days and 40 nights. While he was there, the devil appeared. What did the devil tell him? He said, if... Look at that condition. That's where it started. If you know, if you know you are the son of God, turn this stone into what? Into bread. He's trying to make God to doubt, trying to make Jesus to doubt his sonship. This was God, God the son. He didn't want Jesus Christ to start doubting his head, his sonship. So Jesus Christ was not going to do any miracle to justify that he's the son of God. So when a man or a woman of God prays for you, Fight it in the mind, and that, that is the battlefield. When he said, Go, you are healed, believe that you are healed. Because once you entertain doubts, it might not work for you. That is where the problem is. So, that is the first spiritual welfare the welfare of the mind. We fight it in our mind. Fight, you fight doubts. You even look at the man of God and you say, hey, when you, you know, sometimes, sometimes when we see men and women of God, we'll come to them face to face. Say, ah, is this how this man is, is, is short? Is this how he's looking? Look at he's looking like. The first day I met Pastor Chris, I was surprised. When I met Pastor Chris, I said, I looks like, in my mind, what I said, I said, look like a schoolboy. Maybe, maybe you know what was in my mind. When I came to him face to face, I, I, I look at him, I say, hey, Pastor Chris look like a, like a schoolboy. But that is a, that is, that is, that is a, spiritual, a spiritual giant. But look at what came to my mind when I saw him face to face for the first time, fast and fast. The first thing I came to my mind, I, you are, this is like, he looks like a schoolboy. In my mind, look at what was coming to my mind. Look at, but this is the man I celebrate on TV. I celebrate, but I had the privilege of coming to Nigeria, going to Kedja. I'm meeting him one-on-one, -on -one, and I start looking at him calling him a schoolboy in my mind. That spirit just left my mind one time. So once you change your mind, once the man of God prays for you, once the woman of God prays for you, don't let any contrary thought come to your mind. If not, the prayer will not work. Remember that Jesus Christ could not do much in his own town, Nazareth. Because what? Because of our familiarity, which we have dealt with one time. So it's not like the prayer will not work, but because of what is on your mind. In relation to the man of God, in relation to the woman of, of God. Let me give you an example. Once you believe in your man of God, what did the prophet say? Joseph had said, if you read 2 Chronicles chapter 20, let, me, let us go there, let us turn there, please. The Holy Spirit just revealing things to me, taking me calls from what I wanted to do. This is the Holy Spirit speaking to us. Let somebody open 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Are we there? Or this? Yes. Uh, 20. Second Chronicles 20. 20. I read in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Second Chronicles 20, 20. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. Amen. 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 This one was, I didn't even think about it, but the Lord just put it in my mind. Look at the king, Jehoshaphat. 
have faith in God and equally in his prophet, and here will be what? Established. So if you don't have faith, even in the man who God is going to use to pray or to bless you, if you have all doubt, it will not work. It will not work. That is the reason why we should be mindful when a man of God pray for us, when a woman of God pray for us, don't judge them by what you see. Don't go by your senses because they are only vessels. They are just vessels. Don't judge them by human qualities that we see. That is the reason. And Amen. Amen. Lo and behold, I was talking about, I was giving an example of a friend of mine, a colleague of, mine. of mine. You know, he is in, he's in California, but because of the belief he first of all have on TB Joshua, he had to believe that this man is a true man of God. He sent me some money to get him anointing water. One, I, once I got to synagogue, I was told that the man of God will give anointing water again. <laughs> I called out my friend. I told him that this man of God doesn't give anointing water again unless you come. Because I, was, I, I went to the, all the gates and we discussed. And he said, unless you come, when he gives you an invitation, when you are going, he just give it as, you know, because many people have abused it. But I want to tell you that because of that faith my friend has, all the way in the U.S., he told me, and I told him that the only way I can help you, I think I have anointing water. I still have a little which I have. Do you know that I should bring the remaining? <laughs> I should send my own anointing water. I had to go back to my bag, start looking for my anointing water. Of course, I was very selfish with it. I was using it small, small. I would take a big, big container. I would spray it inside. I will keep the rest. So it was lucky. And that my man, that my colleagues had to send an anointing water, which I did. I sent it through our postal service and it arrived. Why do you think so? This boy believed in the man of God, that God is using this man. So, uh, sorry, this man, Mr. Fonja, is a mathematics teacher in California. So if you don't believe in your man of God, the said man of God that God is using, his prayer can hardly work for you because you have abode doubts. And that was the reason why Jesus Christ would not do much in his own town. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that is the first, uh, the first welfare in the mindset. The second one I want to tell us now is dealing with Satan and demons. You know, that's what we have read. Satan and demons, where we are fighting, you know, fighting, fighting them, using us, fighting all the strongholds in our lives. Let me tell you, there are most of us that are struggling with addictions. We are struggling with alcohol, struggling with sexual passion, with cigarettes, you know, we, you know, fighting and quarreling, all those strongholds in our lives. So there is a time, even, even marine spirits, you know, I have, as a principal, I was, I, was, I was privileged to meet students who had marine spirit. And they told me in my office, they, they would tell me that, say, I have marine spirit. And they would narrate how they were, how they were initiated. You know, so those kind of strongholds, we need welfare prayer to break them. You know, I remember one told me that she used to go to the river to swim with her friends. 
And one day she was all alone. I had two cases like that. She was all alone. And that day, a woman appeared to her, and a woman, they just a woman said, Don't tell anybody. And that was how and that was how she became possessed. <clears throat> On that one was is a close friend of mine, too, who told me that the mother used to her every day at Mutengene to go to the stream to go and wash clothes of her brothers and everything. So she will always be there washing, washing, because she was afraid of her mom. So while she was doing that washing by the riverside every day, every day, every day, that was how a marine spirit possessed her. That she said she said she will fight with that man she, in the dream that every night before she sleeps, she'll be afraid to go to bed. When everybody is saying good night, she's afraid. It's because that man will come to her every night. And she said that man, anytime she wants to get married, when somebody proposed marriage to her, the man will attack, the, the spirit husband will attack the business of that man or attack the, the life of that man. So because of that, she's scared of men. Not because she doesn't love men, but because she's afraid because her marine husband will attack such persons. So this is a story where people, personal experience told me, so this is a welfare prayer. Such cases is welfare. You don't come to the presence of God lightly. You pray such welfare prayer. Prayer of deliverance. One form of prayer is prayer of agreement. If you, the person you are praying for, does not agree with you in the spirit, the prayer will not work. Remember that when Jesus, when people come to Jesus for healing, Jesus, they, they will run, they, they want to run to Jesus. Then Jesus will, ha- will ask them, what do you want? He say, I want to see again. I want to see again. They just kind of will touch them and say, your faith has made you what? Whole. So most people come to men and women of God for prayers. They, they don't have a corresponding faith. That is why when you, even you are not mean only the men of God, all of us on this mountain, we have the ability to pray to anybody, for anybody. Anybody want to pray, let them know that it meets you at the level of their expectation. That means there must be mutual expectation. I want you to be healed. But do you believe that God can heal you? Do you believe that you can be? You must ask them those basic questions. Are you coming here just because you want to come and try? Because some people are coming to try. Amen? Amen. Um, some people are just coming to what? To try their luck. They say, okay, I've tried Mr. A. I have tried Pastor B. Let me go and try Pastor so, 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 or Prophetess this. So they are not actually in agreement. They come with a doubtful heart only to try. But some people will come to men and women of God and they say that this is my last bus stop. We've seen that on the manual TVs many times. Some people say that this is when they come with that faith that this is my last bus stop. There is no way God will not answer you. Amen. Amen. So that's prayer of agreement. Agreement. So there's another prayer of watch and pray. Some of all just pray, we don't watch. Watch and pray that we don't fall into the same temptation. A man of God will pray for us. A woman of God will pray for us. We receive our healing. We go back to the same sin again. When we sin, that same affliction comes back, like the story of the demon. That came by religion. We saw that in the Bible. You know? So sometimes, it's not like God has not answered the prayer. The man of God will pray. The man of God will pray. Then when he pray for us, we, we are strong a little. <laughs> okay, I can walk now. I'm strong. We'll go back again like dog. I'll go back to the same vomit. The same thing you threw up. And the same affliction comes again. When the Bible says affliction will not come, what? Twice. So, so we should know this. We should watch and pray. We should watch and guard ourselves. Because the demon that afflicts you will still come again. <laughs> that temptation that came before will still come again. Remember that when Jesus Christ cast out, he said, said Satan, get behind you. The Bible said Satan left for what? For a while. For what? A, a while. Wow. So we should watch. We should pray. We should watch. We should mind ourselves. If not, at the end of the day, we'll go to the same error. We'll start concluding that this, the prayer of this man of God is not working. The prayer of this man of God is not working. So we should not go back to our usual lifestyle. Amen? Amen. Then there's a prayer of thanksgiving. There's a prayer of thanksgiving. In prayer of thanksgiving, we know not all the time that will come before God that will start only complaining. 
complaining. God may not answer that prayer because it's a prayer of complaining all the time. What? Because there are many reasons for we to God. You are alive. It's a reason to thank God. You have a roof on the, all over your head. It's a reason to thank God. You have food to eat. It's a reason to thank God. Your children are well and healthy and healthy. It's a reason to thank God. That you breathe every day is a reason to thank God. Some of us, we don't thank God for what we have and we are still wanting him to do more. You that you are sick, you have come to the man of God. Won't you even thank God to, to pray for you? In that time, won't you can't even thank God that God, thank you that I'm, still, I'm even still alive. So God said that this one is afflicted. This one is afflicted. He's thanking me. What if I heal him completely? Holy, what will he or she do? He will do more. There are most of us, we are not grateful. That is the reason why we don't receive our healing. That is the reason we don't receive our miracle. We don't have a grateful heart. We don't have a thankful heart. Anytime we come before God, oh God, oh, I need the new cow. Oh God, oh, my son, oh, oh God, oh, my children, oh, oh God, oh, the new car I want to buy, oh, oh God, oh. The God is tired of hearing complaints. Look round about you. Yeah, has he not done anything for you? I think there is a song saying that he has done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. If I have 10,000 tongues, it wants to be enough. We don't have the spirit of thanking God. We only have the spirit of asking and complaining. That is why some of us, that small sickness you have is not going because God said that I cannot heal you now because you have not said thank you for the other things I have done for you. So we should have a what? A thankful heart. Because from, from, from this teaching, God is even ministering to me. Anybody else for that comes to me for prayer, I will ask that person, what is it in your life that you have reasons to thank God for? If you don't have any reason to thank God for, I will not even pray for you. I think as for that's what I will do. I will not even pray for you. When you come before me, whether you are crying, you are dying, I will say, hush for a while. Is there anything in your life that we want to thank God for? Let us start by thanking God. If you don't have a reason to thank God, I have no reason to pray for you. Because my God is a God that takes pleasure in thanksgiving. Because when you thank God for little things, what? You will do more. The Bible says that he that is faithful in little things shall be faithful in what? In much. So that is the reason why we don't receive answers to our, our prayer. I want to stop here today for the sake of our time. I see I have more to say. I beg mommy with our permission so that I can be, I'll, I'll exhaust the prayer, the prayer series that he has given me to do. So I want us to pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us be to thank God. Let us be to thank God for all what he has done for us. Those little things. Let us make it our prayer right now in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for all the things you've done for us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the roof over our head. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, for health. Thank you for the car. Thank you for the house. Thank you for my children's life. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you, Heavenly Father. That is all I want to say. I just want to say thank you, Lord. I thank you for all the good things that you have. I thank you Can we sing this together? I thank you for that. I just want to say Baba oh I just want to say I just want to say Baba oh, 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 Baba, 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this session. Thank you, Lord God, that you've opened our eyes to understand the reason why we need to thank you the more. Father, Lord God, we know that when we are grateful, you shall do greater things in our lives. For this, we say thank you in Jesus' mighty name. We are afraid. Let the children of God shout, three believing, amen. 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 Three. Amen. Can we give God a God? Can we give clap, clap, clap offering to the Lord? Let us just celebrate God. Celebrate God with a clap offering. Over to Mama for or Apostle. Over to Mami for or Apostle. Or oh, is online and then just edit or oh, felicitas. I think Mama for is there. Amen. 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 People of God, we thank God, thank God, thank God for this wonderful morning. Hello. It's a wonderful day. The day that the Lord has brought us together again. It's like one family this morning. Thank God for his word, his message. From Pastor Tujo. Man of God, more grace. More grace, more grace, more grace. May mommy help us to put those scriptures on our line. Please. We thank God. We thank God. For the message this morning, so wonderful, wonderful message. Amen. 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 People of God, I just want to want to appreciate him again. As the scripture has said this morning, to thank him for all what he has been doing to us. I even thank him in advance for what he is preparing to do. Testimonies. Testimony time. Blessing time. Blessing time. Testimony time. Blessing time. Let's go ahead. <laughs> 